So in this video, we'll learn about the global execution context in JavaScript. But before we can look at what this global execution context is, we need to cover a few things. So here, let's just pretend I have a file named index.js. And in that file, I've declared a function and then I've uh, executed the function and stored that return value in my result. So the question is, what happens when our JavaScript code is executed? Intuitively, this is how our program is being stored in memory. So here we are declaring a function and essentially what's going on is we are creating a variable named squared. And in that variable, we are storing the entire function definition for squared. So it's important to note that when we define or declare a function, we are not executing or running the function. We are storing the function so we can use it later in our program. And with that out of the way, we can now run this last line of code. And now here we have the left-hand side of the assignment and the right-hand side of the assignment. So the right-hand side of the assignment, it's a little bit more complicated, but in the next slide, we will walk through the execution of the function squared step by step. So for now, let's just handle the left hand side of the expression because this is pretty straightforward. So here we are creating a variable called my result. And so uh, initially my result will be undefined while JavaScript executes the squared function. But for now, the value that is going to be stored there is undefined. Okay, so now that we dealt with the left-hand side of the expression, now we need to walk through step-by-step uh, step what happens when we execute the square function. And so anytime we execute a function, we create a new execution context that corresponds to that function. So here we are executing a function squared and we are passing the value of five. And so when we execute this function, we create a new execution context. And so this gives rise to what is commonly referred to as local memory or otherwise known as the variable environment. And so anytime we execute a function, as we are here with the squared function, we need to essentially look it up in memory. And I've gone ahead and placed the function definition of squared off to the right hand side of the execution context just for convenience. Cool. So at this point we have found the function definition for squared. But before we can even go inside of the body of the function and, you know, start running the code line by line, we need to handle the parameters in the function. And as a side note, the parameters are general placeholders in our function definition. What we pass into a function when we are ready to call it is called an argument. Okay, so with that out of the way, we, now we need to handle the argument that we passed into the square function, and that argument is five. And so intuitively, this is what's going on. We are passing the argument five in this case to the function definition and in the process we create this local variable called input number so the parameter name will be used as the variable name and the argument or what we pass into our function will be the value assigned to this uh, new local variable and so now that we handled all of the arguments being passed into our function, we can finally enter the body of the function and start running the very first line in this function. And in this very first line, we are creating a new variable called result. And so in result, we are storing input number times input number. And we already know what input number is. Input number is just five. So really this is saying five times five. And so what we store in result is 25. And so finally, we hit the return keyword. Now the return keyword indicates that we are ready to leave the function and we are ready to 
return something. And in this particular case, we are returning results. Actually, the variable result is not what gets returned. What gets returned is the value stored in result, which is 25. So what is really getting returned is the value of 25. And so finally, we know what to store in my result, which is 25. And since our function is done running, so we've already you know, returned out of that function, the execution context is garbage collected. Okay, so we're gonna go through the example one more time, but this time around, we are going to see what the global execution context is in JavaScript. Okay, so one more time. What happens when our JavaScript code is executed? When we execute our JavaScript code, in other words, when we run our index.js file, we create a new global execution context, which consists of the following two things. So the first thing is the thread of execution. And so the thread of execution is just responsible for parsing our code line by line. So we run our code, and we create this global execution context. And at this point, the thread of execution will first parse our function line by line. And so here, this arrow that is pointing to the first line in the function definition, uh, you can think of this arrow as the thread of execution. So anyways, the thread of execution will parse our function line by line. And as we saw in the previous slides, the result of doing this is basically it just creates a new squared variable. And in that squared variable, we store the entire function definition. And so finally, we come to the last line of code in our file. And, and at this point, this is the focus of the thread of execution. And as we saw on the previous slide, there are two different things going on here. First, we are declaring a variable called my result. And on the right hand side, we are executing the function. But as we saw, initially, my result will be undefined while JavaScript executes the squared function. So let's go ahead and store undefined here. And as we saw again in the previous slide, when we execute a function, we create a new execution context corresponding to that function. And so we execute the squared function and we create this new execution context. And by creating this new execution context, we give rise to the to this idea of local memory or otherwise known as uh, the variable environment. And so when we execute our square function, we essentially look up the function definition, which is stored somewhere in memory. Uh, but before we can even go inside the body of the function and start running the code line by line, we need to take care of the arguments that are being passed into this squared function. And in this case, we're only passing one argument and that happens to be the value of five. And if you recall, Parameters are general placeholders in our function definition. What we pass into a function when we are ready to call it is called an argument. Okay, so let's handle the value of five or the argument that is being passed into the squared function. Okay, so we pass in the value of five and in the process, we create this local variable called input number, which is the parameter name and the value that we will store it in input number is the argument that we passed into our function, which is five. So now that we handled all of the arguments being passed into our function, we are ready to enter the body of the function and start running the code line by line. And so here we are creating a variable called result and we are storing input number times input number. And we know input number is just five. So really what's going on here is five times five, and that happens to be 25. So we are storing the value of 25 in our variable result. And finally here we are hitting the return 
statement in our function definition. So that is giving us an indication that we are ready to exit our function. And so we return result. Actually, the variable result isn't what gets returned. What gets returned is the value stored in result, which is 25. And so we go ahead and update the value to 25. And so now we know what to store in my result, which is 25. So we go ahead and update that value. And so finally, we already know what to store in uh, my result. And at this point, you know, we have exited the function, we have returned a value. And so the execution context is garbage collected. Okay, and so the second thing, which is part of the global execution context is known as the global variable environment, which is where our variables are stored. So for example, if we take a look at our index.js file, here we have declared a function and we have created a variable my result. And to my result, we have assigned the return value that is returned after executing the squared function with the value of five. And so typically when we write programs, we are uh, declaring multiple functions and creating multiple variables. And so as we declare these variables and as we declare these functions, you know, those variables live somewhere in memory. And so those variables and function declarations are collectively known as the global variable environment. Okay, so we will go through this example one more time and add another piece to the puzzle. Okay, so again, what happens when our JavaScript code is executed? When we execute our JavaScript code, we create a new global execution context, which consists of the following two things. One, the thread of execution, which is responsible for parsing our code line by line. And two, we create a global variable environment where our variables are stored. So we run our code and we create this global execution context. But how does JavaScript know where we are in our code? So for example, how does it know when we are inside of a function or when we are within the global execution context? And the answer to that question is that JavaScript uses a stack to keep track of where it is in our code or in other words, to keep track of the thread of execution. And a stack is a simple data structure that allows us to either push an item to the top of the stack or pop an item off the top of the stack. And so off to the left, I've created here an empty stack. And as I said, we can push an item to the top of the stack. So here I'll go ahead and push the number two to the top of the stack. I'll go ahead and push the number one to the top of the stack. And I'll go ahead and push the value 10 to the top of the stack. I also said that we can pop an item off the top of the stack. So here we'll pop 10 off the top of the stack. And now we have one, which is at the top of the stack. So now we can go ahead and pop one off the top of the stack. And now we're just left with one item in the stack, which happens to be at the top of the stack. And we'll go ahead and pop the value two off the top of the stack. And now we have no items in our stack. And so now that we know what a stack is, we can go back to the discussion of how does JavaScript keep track of the thread of execution? So when we create a new uh, global execution context, JavaScript behind the scenes creates a call stack. And the very first thing that is pushed to the top of the stack is the global execution context. So essentially you can think of the global execution context as a function. And when we first create the global execution context, the thread of execution is within our global execution context. Okay, and so now we just proceed as before. Uh, so at this point, the thread of execution will first parse our function line by line. And the result of, you know, parsing this function line by line creates a new variable called squared. And in that variable, we store the entire function definition squared. 
And so finally, our thread of execution will deal with this last line of code. And now here we have two very different things going on. We are creating a variable called my result in memory, but initially my result will be undefined while JavaScript executes the squared function. So we'll go ahead and place the value of undefined in my result while we figure out what to store in my result. So as I mentioned before, when we execute a function, we create a new execution context corresponding to that function. So here, when we run the function squared with the value of five that is passed into it, we create this you know, global execution context, which gives rise to the idea of this uh, local memory or otherwise known as the variable environment. And at this point, the thread of execution is no longer within the global execution context. The thread of execution is now within the squared function. And so anytime we execute a new function, it is, you know, added to the top of the call stack. And so at this point, the thread of execution, as I mentioned before, is within the context of the squared function. Okay, and so with that out of the way, we can continue executing our squared function. So we look up the squared function, which is stored somewhere in memory. We then pass the value of five to that function. And remember, before we can go within the body of the function and start running the code line by line, we need to handle all of the arguments that are being passed into our squared function. So in the process, we create a local variable called input number. And the value that we stored in input number is the value that we passed in to the squared function, which is five. And so now that we handled all of the arguments being passed into our function, we can finally move inside the body of the function and start running its code. So in the first line, we are creating a variable called result. And in that variable, we are storing the value of input number times input number, which is 25. And so finally, once we hit the return keyword, this gives us an indication that we are ready to leave the function and return a value. And the value that we return here is result. But as we have seen, the variable result is not what gets returned. What gets returned is the value stored in result, which is 25. So really, we are returning 25. And so now that we know what to store in my result, we go ahead and update its value with 25. And so finally, we know what to store in my result. And since our function is done running, the execution context is you know, garbage collected. And so at this point, since our squared function is done running, it no longer needs to be at the top of the call stack. So we go ahead and pop it off the top of the call stack. And now our thread of execution returns back to its original starting point, which is the global execution context. Okay, so there are a few more things that I wanna talk about, but it won't take long. So as we saw, when we execute our JavaScript code, we create a new global execution context, which consists of the following two things. The thread of execution, which is responsible for parsing our code line by line, and two, we create a global variable environment where our variables are stored. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the thread in JavaScript. The thread in JavaScript is single threaded, meaning we can only do one thing at a time. And two, it is synchronous, meaning we read our code from top to bottom and run it as it appears in the file. We do line one, then line two, then line three, then line four, and finally line five. We don't jump from line one to line five and then process lines two, three, and four. And with that, now you know what the global execution context is in JavaScript.